Hello, welcome back, all my favorite coder cats and coder kittens. As usual, this is Becca. You going by Netcat or Netcat's Meow most places online. And I w am here this week to once again be your coder kitty to talk to you about Linden scripting language. So, last week we began to talk about using certain aspects of a prim as a way of storing memory. So, this week we're going to expand on that to be able to draw information from multiple parts within a single collection of prims, like you might construct for a HUD or other useful object like that. And we're also going to look into ways that you can hold different types of data. Uh, we've covered a bit about using, being able to hold three different strings of data. And anybody who's used any other form of programming is well familiar with something called a comma separated value file. I'm not sure if I'm going to quite get into that today, but that's one of the places we will be going. But mainly right now I'm going to focus on how you can pull information from different parts into one overall location. Uh, there is all going to center around the ability to get information from linked params. And we've done a lot with set link primitive parameters, but in this case we're going to be using its corollary, get link primitive parameters. Sorry little fuzz muffin, my precious cat, you've got to get over there. I can't have you on my keyboard if I'm going to work. So. get link primitive params. While well, I'm waiting on that. Ah, there it goes. Doesn't want to come up. There we got a version off the wiki. Just so much more convenient than to show you how where to get stuff sometimes than to remember absolutely everything myself. We're going to do a simple three box structure. Just using the same one as last time. And we're going to show how you can actually read information from each of the different prims. Now, for a lot of things, this isn't super necessary. Again, this is only for when you need non-volatile memory storage. What that means, non-volatile, means that it will still be there after a reset. For a lot of the stuff you're going to code, that isn't all that necessary, or it is something, as I talked about last week, that's easy enough to identify just from the state of the object itself. But if you're doing any sort of significant data work with it, we're actually going to eliminate the others because they're no longer necessary. Then you're going to wind up needing to both write to and read from the data in different places. If you need more than three fields for data, then you're going to need to access get link and set link primitive parameters. So the first parameter we're going to be concerned about, let us say line one, string line two, string line three. Had to find the right one. We're going to set this up to read the description fields from each of these and the name fields from each of these. And we're going to set those up to show up with the set text prim on because 
doing so is just a simple way to show this in action. Um, depending on what your specific data needs are, if you're looking for a HUD system for a roleplay environment, you may be storing stats and character data there. If you're looking instead for um, something for keeping track of projects, that may be different. What you'll want to keep track of is just as variable as what type of data you're working with. So right now I'm just going to show how to get the data. It'll be up to the needs of your individual projects to decide what you want to do with the data. So when it shows prim on, instead of just having the set text to prim on, we're going to write this out to do, 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 string one plus I believe it's the forward slash n. This is one I admit I frequently remember incorrectly, so I might be wrong. So, sorry, I had getting a small interruption over here. I'm usually better about those. Just to make sure that will show up with something, we're going to change these to equals line one. Line two. My mistake that it was line up there and string down here. <sighs> Apologies for that, my favorite coder cats and coder kittens, but I have had something of a day, including a bit of family issues that I don't particularly want to talk about on my video here. There, had to turn their visibility back on. It was the backslash. There it is. Line one, line two, line three. I'm doing this so that we can go through and we will set this to read different data based on whether it is set to the on or the off configuration, as well as be able to change that data based on interaction with other buttons. This way I can better show you how all of the parts of this are going to work. So, actually it should be a two and a three, so... It was detected link number equals two. Else if detected link number zero. You want detected zero because you're just looking to get the first one. And if you remember, computers always start their list at zero. There. Now I've just safely contained all the rest of this in the else. So, what we're going to do 
is that That's right, right now this one is set to read these automatically, so we're really only going to be able to read these two without changing the original code. So, test one. Desk one. Test two. That will suffice for the moment. So, what we're going to do is, when this is touched, if it's going to read for visible, we want line one equals get link primitive parameters zero to read this particular one. I'm sorry, that would actually be one in this case because links are weird. And then we'll go through here to find I showed you how to get that, didn't I? Didn't I show how to? Yes, I did. To read the print text. Actually, you know what? That's a great way to get that. So we'll deal with that in a Just remember, whenever we're dealing with something that's like get primitive parameters, it's enough of a pain in the rear that it's worth going through and reading all these to make sure you get the syntax correctly. That's another thing that going through this does for you. Going through the wiki, make sure that you don't wind up with any problem where the way you're putting the commands in is incorrect. That will cause you no end of grief if it is, and it's a good thing to try to work around when you can. Okay, that is a thing I had not considered. Because get link primitive parameters can return a wide range of possible information, it itself is not cast as a string. Though the prim description, which is what we're reading, will be a string, because we're using the command get link primitive parameters to get it, link get link primitive parameters does not come with a set data type. So or if it does, it's not one of the standard data types, and so in order to use it, we still have to cast it as a string. So, there we go. It automatically changed to what I had placed in the description fields here, description one, here, description two, and what is edited into the description field It's evidently reading it before it runs that change. Yes, set object description prim on comes after this. So this becomes a wonderful example of the importance of order of operation. If you want that to match what you would expect, you need to set the description before you try to read the description. Now, because
because I remember from looking at that before, rather recently, this is just prim name. Change all those. Remember order of operation, although this affects description, so it won't actually show up here, but it's good for keeping everything flowing correctly. That's right, that didn't show because I didn't change the set text. That was a little silly of me. There we go. Georgia, I've had something of a long day. So now it is showing what's in the name fields. So it's reading information from these other two prims. But what you want to be able to do in order to use this for both, this is for data retrieval, but you also want to use it for data storage. So you want your HUD unit to be able to write information to each of these different places. So what we're gonna do is we're going to give each of these two boxes a purpose. And we're going to get that with... Pop open our wiki again. That is going to be set link primitive parameters instead of get. description. So this will be changing the main prim, the one that we get all of our stuff from. But because we're setting parameters, it requires a little bit more than getting them. So we have to put in the full thing here. It says we're going to change the prim name and we're going to change it to since the name section of the root prim is supposed to hold a color, we're going to put in a different color for that. So we're going to make it, let's make it red because the RGB value is easy. I mean you can make it anything but that just makes it easy. Change to name color was set to red. Because we're playing with data. You see here the only difference is, let me close that back. You see here the only difference is here it's prim name with string name prim description with string description. So color was set to blue. Problem is, 
it wanted a string and we gave it a vector. The way to solve that is for me not to be a derp. And remember to put quotation marks around the vector. Also, for me not to derp by forgetting to set those to other prims. <laughs> this is more screw-ups than you're accustomed to from me. The color was set to red because we're playing with data. The color is set to blue, but you won't see it because it's hidden. The reason that doesn't work is because we set this to the description. If we set this to the name, that will work. That was dumb on my part. <laughs> Shows sometimes I'm in a little bit of a hurry to get to places. It still shows that we're blue because it's reading the name section, or the description section. It will always show those, and those aren't set to match the, the colors there. So that's a little dumb on my part, admittedly. So what you'd really want to do is not take the simple route. What you'd really want to do is change description because different versions will read the name or the description field if you really want that to accurately reflect what you've set you have to make sure that it will read the right one from either one all this derping about really is just showing what the, the different things you can do with pulling data from different prints. The ability to store and access data really is only important when you have some reason to access data. So hopefully though, this does give a bit of an explanation to the person that, to, I believe it was Echo that asked for this, to understand what all this was for. Ultimately, all this comes down to data management. Next time, I should have be able to come up with something that will involve a larger data set, and then I can actually put together a proper data table system that I can show you, but this time I wanted to focus on just writing and reading data from multiple points within the array of prims. So next week, I'll try to come up with something more complicated to do with that data. Uh, possibly connect it to a... Actually, yes, I can connect it to a in-sim teleport, because I've been meaning to talk to you all about that for a while. So we'll take these two little bits and use it to begin to construct an in-sim teleport control HUD. So... Y'all, cat, coder, cats, and coder kittens, come back for that one next week. Uh, as usual, this has been Becca going by Netcat or Netcat's Meow most places online. I look forward to having y'all back. Thanks for watching. As usual, these videos drop Tuesdays by noon Eastern Standard Time. There will be a Discord link in the description. And because somebody commented in one of the earlier videos about hoping there'd be a playlist. I will include a link for the actual playlist of these videos as well. Um, for anybody that wonders why I didn't follow through with my promise of having the first episode of the Weekly Nerd News up this past week, it is because I had tried to and I had some trouble with importing the footage from my phone when it would 
render up to a point and then fail every single time. So once I figure out what's causing that error, I will be back on track. I've actually have been streamlining my process for gathering the information that I'm going to put into that series. So despite a lot of bumps on the road, there is progress being made. So sorry to disappoint anybody that had been expecting that one. Um, turns out, you know, getting new stuff off the ground is not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so again, that's it for all of this. Um, good day. Good week. Happy coding. Meow. <laughs>